In this video, we're going to look at how we can find the principal in a continuous interest problem. When we're looking for a variable, we'll find it's helpful to evaluate what we can first, and then solve for the remaining variable. In this first example, again, we'll look for the key phrase, compounded continuously. When we see that phrase, we know the equation we need to use is a equals p e to the r t power. We want to pay for an $1,100 vacation, so this is the final amount we want in the account. It's going to be 10 years before we take this vacation. This is our time. The 9% is the rate, which needs to be written as a decimal, 0.09. We can start plugging this into the formula to get 1,100 equals p times e to the r, or 0.09, times time, which is 10. We will then evaluate what we can. Remember to be careful with the type of calculator you have. You may have to put parentheses around the exponent. As we evaluate the e, we'll use several decimals to ensure accuracy with these exponential equations. e to the 0 0.09 times 10 is 2.4596031 times our principal. To get the principal alone, we simply have to divide by this decimal on both sides. When we do, we can find the principal needed to pay for this $1,100 vacation in 10 years is going to be $447.23. Let's take a look at another example where we seek to find the principal that will earn us a million dollars in 100 years. Again, we see the key phrase continuous interest, which tells us the equation we should use is a equals p e to the r t. We see 12% is our rate as a decimal, 0.12. 100 years would be our time, and the million dollars is the final amount we want to have in the account. Using 1 million for a equals p e to the r, which is 0.12, times the time, which is 100 years. Again, being careful, depending on the type of calculator we have with the exponent, we can evaluate the e to several decimal points to ensure accuracy. We end up with 1 million equals 162,754.791419 times the principal. To get the principal alone, we divide by this 162,000 number. on both sides. This will isolate the principal and tell us how much money should have been invested 100 years ago so that we would have a million dollars today. This investment is only $6.14, which has grown to over a million dollars. By using the continuous interest formula and evaluating what we can, we can quickly solve the remaining equation to find the principle we are looking for.